Welcome to the Take Charge of Change podcast. In this podcast, we'll help you to lead a more resilient professional and personal life by sharing great content to make you smarter, more energetic, emotionally healthy, financially confident, so you accomplish your professional and personal goals in spite of the challenges that are sure to come your way. John Humphreys here. Welcome to the Take Charge of Change podcast. This podcast is a continuation of our discussion uh, from ideas we've taken from the book Resilience by the author Eric Reitens. Uh, for more information about the book and Eric Reitens, be sure to take a look at the show, links on the show notes um, for this particular podcast. So we'll continue talking about some great concepts that Eric shared uh, with us in the book. Um, so let's do it right now. You know, often in life we're pursuing happiness. It seems like um, uh, the great quest for, for most of us anyway is the pursuit of happiness. Uh, the happiness of excellence is when we apply ourselves to a purpose beyond ourselves. And we talked about the importance of cultivating purpose, um, passionate uh, values that drive our actions as being a really critical important to cultivating our professional and personal resilience. Uh, sometimes you have to harness uh, your craziness to do great things. It's not always about being rational. And so dreaming big dreams, I think, and he argues in the book, is a really important component to building resilience. It's not just about always being practical and rational and reasonable. Um, Greatness and our ability to really drive our abilities and cultivate our giftings um, can be um, flowing from an area that when people look at our lives, think we're a little bit irrational. Mastery in our lives, whatever area we want to master, lives on top of a pile of mistakes. And so a lot of people never begin the quest of resiliency and building their abilities in every area of their life um, because they don't want to make mistakes. And yet mistakes is really, like he says, um, um, the necessary fodder, the necessary prerequisite for mastery in our lives. Those who are successful have learned to uh, coexist with this notion of failure. So when you fail, you make sure you learn from your failures. So that's critical. You don't, I mean, uh, non-resilient people continue to make the same mistakes, never change course, never change direction, never seem to learn from those mistakes. Uh, So uh, one Zen proverb says, move and the way will open, right? Um, But you need to be moving in a certain direction. You need to take mistake, make mistakes, learn things along the way, course correct, And if you keep doing that, you will uh, enjoy, at some point down the road, mastery of your chosen profession or other areas of your life. Let's talk about the notion of flourishing. Um, That's this idea of using your vital powers along the lines of excellence in the various spheres of your life. Um, It's a condition that we um, basically decide upon through the choices we make. Uh, so flourishing really is um, cultivated through the you know the cultivation of virtue and right conditions. So resilience is a virtue required for flourishing. So if we want to flourish in any area of our life, uh, let's say one area we want to flourish in is is our uh, our school life or our professional life. We know that we have to master certain ideas to flourish in that area. Uh, But it takes grit, it takes excellence, it takes persistence, it takes tenacity, it takes those notions of resilience to develop that flourishing that we are questing for. Another thing that Derek Reitens talks about is is this idea that living in an urban setting um, creates a certain detachment, maybe an unreality, a lack of reality uh, in our lives. Uh, And what he's talking about that is that idealism sets in and we think that sort of man's inventions and technology will ultimately save save the day. Uh, people who come from the land are under no such illusions. You talk to anyone that farms, uh, they've got this great balance between, you know, the, the notion of, um, you know, technology and what innovation and technology has given to us, um, but they don't have necessarily the same degree of idealism when they look at the world. People that come from you know, more rural settings uh, are closer to the earth. They know that um, circumstances can quickly, quickly change in our lives. And that leads to this sort of realism 
that accompanies resilience. Uh, that status quo is never status quo. The minute we think we have things mastered, the minute we think we have things figured out, uh, the world is changing so quickly that we'll wake up one day and realize that all the rules of the game that we thought, if we played by them, uh, life would be okay, have changed. And of course, we're seeing that all around our world. If you look at economics and employment and where economic growth is taking place, and you see you know, economic opportunities being extracted slowly from North America or Western European economies, they're going to Southeast Asia or other developing worlds, and people in the middle class, particularly with um, lower skills, uh, they're underemployed, wondering why their standard of living is deteriorating. Well, the overall economic pot in the world is growing, but where that pot is growing is going through some major shifting. And so people thought that you know, their idealistic view of the world and their notion of the world was going to be status quo. It wasn't going to change. And now they're looking to government and all kinds of other man-made solutions to try to keep that change from happening. And likely those forces are much bigger than uh, what they think they are. And that change, that idealism of the past probably won't come back for them. They've got to adjust. They have to make new um, goals for themselves, maybe new training, a new way of viewing the world, and certainly for their children, a new way of dealing with the world. So happiness is a function of three major things. It's a combination of grace, excellence, and pleasure, and we'll talk about that. So just like the three primary um, colors that create an infinite uh, array of colors, grace, excellence, and pleasure can create an infinite mix of happiness and happiness experiences. So, you know, pleasure, a good example is, you know, good food, healthy food, great sleep, a warm fire uh, to be, um, you know, protected from the cold, grace that can be cultivated through walking in the park, prayer, thankfulness, meditation. So what brings true happiness? The achievement or the process of getting to our goals. Is that how we get happiness? As it turns out, it's the process that creates uh, flow and happiness. It's the process of pushing and striving and stretching ourselves that leads to happiness. The process of obtaining mastery, that's hard work, ultimately leads to happiness. It's hardwired into our humanity. The more that we push the envelope, the more we strive for mastery, the more that we try to improve ourselves, through years of training or trial and error or however the process is for you in your chosen field or area of life that you want to improve upon, that will bring mastery, that will bring flow into your life and that will bring deep sense of satisfaction for you. It's a concept of marshalling our psychic energy, our mental energy, in a worthy direction that makes us better. Joy, like sweat, is the byproduct of these activities, not your aim. Right? So that's the irony, is that if you're questing for happiness, you're probably not going to find it. But if you go about improving yourself in various areas and achieving mastery and doing tough things and over time developing your abilities in various areas, ultimately along the way, you're going to experience happiness. So again, joy like sweat is the byproduct of the activity, not your aim. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Take Charge or Change podcast. Uh, if you want more information about developing both personal and professional resilience, be sure to visit our website at www.takechargeofchange.com. Uh, if you are serious about pursuing professional resilience, be sure to download our free ebook, The Resilient Professional, 15 chapters of great content that will take you on a journey towards professional resilience. All the best in your journey to professional and personal resilience.